Welcome back, Knock Nation. Here we are in Trex's lair with the blue cyclone. Uh, fortunately, it broke down yesterday, and many of you know the pain and heartache of uh, letting out the clutch and nothing happening. So luckily, I was two blocks uphill around the corner. We coasted it down home, and there was only two to three feet of actual foot knocking involved right here in the driveway. Now we've got it in the house, uh, the dining room slash engine building room slash like building room slash jewelry design center slash uh, occasionally dining room. We'll get it jacked up in the air and show you exactly uh, how to go about it step by step. Make sure you get a nice tight fit and get your rear backing gear. Alrighty then, Knock Nation. We've gathered up a couple of tools. We've got about a 10 inch lift kit put on the knock. Got it up on a motorcycle jack thanks to Brother Hawaiian 9. Blow me his tools. I know uh, milk crate is traditional, but uh, this makes it a lot easier, a little safer, all strapped down. We're going to start in first with a couple of tools. We've got a 14 millimeter to attack the nuts on those pins that are sheared. You probably want to leave everything assembled and try to loosen these first. Put the bike in gear so you've got something to work against. That way you can get those loosened up because once you've got it apart and in your lap, it's going to be real tough to do and that could be hazardous to your lap. And of course you want your 13 16 or metric equivalent uh, crescent wrench. Pull the big main axle bolt. Before you do that, you want your 13 millimeters to loosen up the tensioners. Slide it up, put the chain off, pull the axle bolt, drop the whole thing down. Pay attention to which way your spacers scatter. Once we've got it apart, we'll go through and inspect the bushings, all the other parts and pieces, uh, the new pins, make sure everything is well aligned and that the hub itself is not cracked or worn out in some fashion. So we'll get it all apart in just a minute. One of the most important tools is a good pair of snap ring pliers. It'll pull the main C-ring on this to disassemble the hub. It can be really difficult to do without them. It's possible, but uh, you, I have scars to prove that it is possible. However, the snap ring pliers are a lot less painful. So, we've got it jacked up, strapped down. We've got our tools together. We're going to start pulling some stuff apart and uh, showing you each piece as it comes off. Okay, uh, the magic of video makes it look a lot easier than it is. But we've wrestled it off of there. Um, the caliper loose, we kept track of our spacers. Now you can see the issue. This is actually still pinned on the place with the snap ring. It's got a lot of wear. Obviously it's something I should check regularly. Probably up those shims as it wears in. Because basically they've got the same condition that you get without the shims, leading to premature pin wear, in my humble opinion. So, snap the sucker off. And here's the kitchen table. Snap the pliers. Easy easy. And there is the ammo line here. A bit of wear from the pins inside of the hub. Pins are sheared off nice and clean. As you can see. In here. <laughs> and in the hub, all the rubbers are actually in good shape. The things are just sheared off and inside the heat. The groove itself looks in good shape. Should be able to use the same strap ring, but we're going to want to shim that up from behind and uh, hopefully get it worked out. And we're back. So as I was figuring out how to get the pins out of the hub there, I turned the wheel over and they all just fell out. Hopefully you'll be that lucky. Everything in the hub, the other parts of the rubber inserts, everything are in good shape. Hopefully you'll be that lucky too. We've got the gear off here, and uh, this is the reasoning why it was so loose again. It's actually indented itself into the aluminum gear, a uh, good two thousandths or so, creating a lot more slop. The original kicker uh, it's a steel plate and won't wear as deeply with aluminum. You want to check it a little more often. This is a good time to uh, replace your sprocket if any of the tips are worn down or broken. Mine's in good shape other than the indention, so we're just going to shim it up because I don't have another one. So we'll make do and get it back together. We'll be back in just a bit when we get all our parts together. Welcome back, knockers. We've got our bolts in. Our new hub here. Want to make sure that they're aligned in the little slots so that they can't spin around. 
put them on just finger tight because the first thing we're going to do is fit it to the hub and that's going to help with the spacing issues just a little tiny play here and there can cause a lot of play a lot of wear over time so you want to make sure that they're centered well in there I've got a little buffer right here so you can see it's all nice and shiny now that looks like brand new and through the magic of internet television uh, we've got a clean shiny hub and wheel been a little busy waiting for parts to come in so you seat your pieces into place here slide them back making sure that they're all fitting into place and then you can tighten up and lock each one of the bolts already prepped with my little bottle of blue Loctite. Ah, I was prepared. Grab your 14. Snug these up a little at a time. That way you know they won't move out of position. And then you can do your spacing. The way we've come up to do this is to get a pair of 5 16 washers. They fit just inside of the hub in here. You can see they don't slide around. And they fit tightly around the pin itself, so there's very little movement or vibration in there. Now, the way everything's worn out on my bike, I've got it figured out for about two each. And that should bring the outer hub up tight against the little C-clip in the ring in the end here. place. Double check your clearance by seeing that you can actually stick the edge of the C-ring into the slot here. It just fits underneath. I've got everything facing the same way I took it off. You don't want to change your chain wear pattern. Got my trusty clips right here. Alrighty, we've got our snap ring into place. Everything is nice and tight. There is no wiggle in there at all. Okay, knockers, we entered the final stretch. We've got our wheel installed, axle in, adjusters all set. Figuring we're as close as we're going to get. The easiest way I found to check to see that your rear sprocket is straight in alignment is to A, assume your engine is straight in the frame, and then your tire being set equally with the uh, proper spacing should be exact in the middle of each side of the frame. So what I do is measure both sides from the inside wall of the tire to the inside wall of the frame to see that they're equal on both sides. You find the highest rib, the outer uh, section of the tire tread, there's a little high end rib closest towards you. Put the uh, tape up to the end and to the inside of the frame I've got exactly one and a half inches on an HK1 200. And on the other side, exactly one and a half inches. Meaning that this tire should be as true center of the frame as possible. The chain should be in straight alignment. And you should reduce all of the wear, tear, and vibration that you possibly can out of the chain drive. With all the wobble taken out of the sprocket and everything properly set, it should last you thousands of miles, probably until I need a new chain and sprocket set. Well, that's it in a nutshell, hard knockers. Hope that helped. Happy hard knocking, and uh, peace, fuckers.